one. The musical <laughs> opened the wound again. I don't know if the country's truly gotten over it. Uh, yeah, a vice president shooting somebody in the street? Yeah, you're darn right we haven't gotten over it. I guess it wasn't a street. And he's not the last vice president to shoot somebody. Who else shot somebody? Dick Cheney. Oh, well, yeah. He shot a guy in the face. Yeah, well, not <laughs> not purposefully. Not in I don't an know, actual Baron formal, Burr meant to hit him. Not in a formal duel, you mean? That was yeah, that's what out, I mean. When, when it was you're... literally met on the middle of an yeah, island right. that was outside of judicial precedent. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. It's <laughs> happened in our lifetime, though. Two presidents yeah, but that ago. Doesn't, that doesn't count. That doesn't count at all. It's not like... Not like Dan Quayle was throwing down with somebody while he was vice president. All right, bro. <laughs> That's it. We're going to settle this like we used to. Yeah, that doesn't... Al, get over here. Ten paces. Yeah, uh, Dick Cheney needing to take a gun safety course is not... That's not the, <laughs> that's not the same thing. All right, stay tuned. Top three stories of the day at kslsports.com coming up right around the corner. We do want to remind you about the Hercules Hero of the Week. Uh, nominate the youth sports volunteer you know for the Hercules Hero of the Week. Submit your nomination at kslsports.com slash contest and listen every Thursday afternoon to JJ and Alex for the winner. Help us celebrate the efforts of those volunteers making an impact with the Hercules Hero of the Week. Sponsored by Hercules First Federal Credit Union and Beehive Meals. More next, 97.5 the KSL Sports Zone. The wins just keep on coming for Kalani Sataki and the Cougars as BYU keeps their dream season alive. It's magical, it's spiritual. How can you not be romantic about this game? As the Cougars look to stay undefeated and make their bid to the college football playoffs. Happy feet. Down. The KSL Sports Zone will be with the Cougars every step of the way. Your home for the best coverage of BYU football hey, let's go. is on air, online, and on the KSL Sports app. This is 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Hands and Scotty and Hands. Football is here. It's time to get ready for fall. But if you don't have the right windows, that means you could be losing a ton of money on your heating bill this fall and winter. You have to have the right windows, and Advanced Windows is going to help make that happen for you. This is a company that was started here in the state of Utah, and they build these windows specific to our climate. The same can't be said for a lot of window providers where they ship off the measurements, they're built out of state, then they're shipped into state. You pay those extra costs. No, 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 no. These are people from Utah. They understand the climate. You've got all the protection you need to keep your house warm in those freezing cold winters. They build it, they install it, and guarantee it for life. And right now, get $2,500 off when you swap out 10 windows or more. That's $2,500 off when you change out 10 windows or more. Great financing options are available as well. Call 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or go to advancedwindows.com. Doug Smith Kia just opened it stores next to the Home Depot in Linden and we just got showered with a special allotment of vehicles you're absolutely going to love. There's a huge selection of new Kia Carnivals and Carnival Hybrids available in a variety of colors and customizable options. A top safety pick with eight passenger slide flex seating and an optional VIP lounge seating package that includes reclining seats and footrests. With its sleek design and fantastic fuel economy, your next road trip or weekend adventure will never be the same. Doug Smith Kia. No one knows Kia like Doug. I'm sitting here with Jeff Jr. of Trajan Wealth. Jeff, I'm concerned because we're in an election year, which is sure to shake things up. Last year was a great year in the market, and it's just not looking as good this year. Well, yeah, the market is cyclical, and that's why it's a perfect time to diversify and lock in some of those gains. You may even qualify for an upfront bonus of up to 30% just for opening an account, and up to 12% guaranteed growth for your retirement income. Up to 30% for just opening an account, and up to 12% per year, all guaranteed? <laughs> yeah, and you probably probably won't hear many other advisors talking about this because they don't have access. I will say it's because of the high interest rate climate we're in, and this probably won't last long. If you're concerned about what this messy election could do to your finances, call Trajan Wealth today and learn how to get up to a 30% bonus and up to 12% growth per year for your retirement income. Call 801-899-7600. Annuity guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. DBA in most states has Trajan Wealth Insurance Solutions. Paid advertisement. 
At JCW's, we think tipping might be getting a little out of hand. Like when you're asked to tip at the register before you've even been served. Or when you're at the yogurt shop and find yourself serving yourself. And don't even get us started on frosted tips making a comeback. That's why at JCW's, when you pay for a third pound ranch bacon cheeseburger, that's what you pay. And no one at the register is going to stare longingly at you while you awkwardly maneuver through the tip screen for food you don't even have yet. Honestly, we're just happy to see you at any of our five locations in Provo, South Jordan, Lehigh, Harriman, and American Fork. So come on in and enjoy some quality time and great food with family and friends. And we promise we won't be pushing you for a tip. Hey, this is Chris with JCW's, and we just want to say thank you, and especially to our loyal customers. We want you to know that at JCW's, your business is all the tip we need. JCW's, quality and a lot of it. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Need a little help? O'Reilly Auto Parts can help. Need advice? We've got advice. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Exceptional customer service. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. When you switch and save with Progressive, you could use that money towards scoring courtside seats for your favorite team. Progressive cannot guarantee that you can score courtside seats. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds on average, but courtside seats can be astronomical. Maybe if your team plays in a smaller market, you could swing it even still. It's unlikely. Maybe fourth row, which are still incredible seats that you'll enjoy greatly. Savings possible. Courtside, long shot. Switch and see if you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance and Affiliates, not available in all states. Progressive cannot guarantee that someone really tall will not sit in front of you at the game, rendering your excellent seats just okay. Listen every Monday morning to... I can't, 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 can't. This is your Cougars at 30 update on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Cougars at 30 update on Jake and Ben. Here's uh, Jake Retzoff saying uh, the team is still uh, still feeling slighted with the uh, narrative of the ranking. Ever since we got ranked in the top 15, it's like, to me, it's not enough. We just got to keep going and keep winning games. And uh, we can't control what the opinions are because we know it's opinions on that top part. You know, there's plenty of really good teams that are not ranked high enough. Plenty of teams, you know, that maybe are ranked too high. But all I know is that we got plenty of things to prove on the field every Saturday or Friday night like this last week. And no matter what, just keep thinking about what got us here. Attention commercial property managers and business owners this winter. Don't let snow turn your parking lot into a haunted house. Let Go Pave Utah clear the scares away. GoPaveUtah.com. Oh, it's got it better than us. No You're home for the best sports coverage in Utah. You're listening to Jake Scott and Ben Anderson on 97.5 the KSL Sports Zone. Make sure to listen to The Zone every week throughout the Utah Hockey Club season for your chance to win tickets. Uh, listen tomorrow during JJ and Alex to win. Tune in at 4 o'clock uh, to the interview with uh, The Bear, the head coach of the Utah Hockey Club. Listen for the keyword Sharks, be color 12. And one lucky listener is going to be uh, getting a pair of tickets to see the Utah Hockey Club versus the San Jose Sharks at Delta Center on October 28th. So listen for your chance to win on your radio home of the Utah Hockey Club. Time for the top three stories of the day at kslsports.com. Brought to you by Jay Brooks Jewelers. Two locations to serve you. One on Winchester Street across from Fash Place Mall. The other Traverse Mountain in Lehigh. Hatch uh, in for Christian uh, through the end of the week. How's Christian doing? You've been 
following him on social media. Is Burnt he... to a crisp. Is he? Yeah. There we go. That's our update. That's uncomfortable. All right. Anyway, Hatch, where are we starting today? <laughs> Number one, Walker Kessler shines in his de- season debut for the Utah Jazz. It was exactly what you wanted to see. Uh, he came out with a ton of energy. He played harder than Zach Eady, which I touted how good Zach Eady's motor was. It really is one of his strengths at being seven foot four and three hundred pounds. But Walker just Yeah, I'm not gonna swear, but kicked his butt. I mean Walker just ruined him. Um and by the way, that's what you should do. Third year centers should absolutely destroy rookies in their debut, which is why I was a little perturbed by what happened against Donovan Klingon on Friday night in Portland. This was a complete role reversal. Um I'm not. I mean, we can get to Zach Eady. I, I, yeah, he, he, Zach Eady's not an NBA player, so Kessler should be dominating him. Uh, what I liked is that Memphis kind of does not have really any more bigs. They've put all their eggs in the Eady basket, and everybody else is soft and not really a a big. Stephen Adams is not on the team anymore. No. Jay Huff was out there as a person I'd not heard of before last night and actually played quite well, but he's a mean player. He's chippy, but he's a three-point shooter. Walker Kessler was ripping heads off to get offensive rebounds. He was. He was treating them like they were soft backup bigs. Yeah. He was playing as if, like, I'm way tougher than you, Yeah. so I'm going to rip your arm off and I'm going to get that offensive rebound, and then I'm going to dunk on you. So frustrated for years of Rudy Gobert refusing to run over players and dunk on them. I loved seeing Walker a little fired up. I thought his body language was totally different. Yep, it was. Than it was last year. And I I think all that stuff is super important for him. Got to talk to him. That's that's how he makes the next step and allows himself to become more highly skilled. Is he's a He's a tough guy. Who's going to make his impact on the on the the game, no matter who they're playing? And he at least showed that against inferior bigs. Got to talk to him after the game. He's added twenty pounds, which is good. He needs to. He needs to be two hundred and seventy pounds to play his style of basketball. One of the most important things that we talked about is he said he talked to a mental strength counselor, basically like you know got some counseling on just like, hey man, you are exactly where you wanted to be. And he said this is basically verbatim. You're exactly where you wanted to be when you were 11 years old. Why aren't you enjoying this? It sounds like Walker had to ask himself this question. Like, this is your dream. You're here. Yeah. Do it. Like, this is where you wanted to be. Are you going to do it or are you going to let it pass you by? And he seems to be leaning into the, oh, this is where I wanted to be. This is who I, this is who I want to be. This didn't accidentally happen to me as a seven-footer who has family that played basketball. This is actually where I want to be. And if he plays with that energy and that desire, he can be really good. And he was really good last night. Uh, Zach Eady, give me one word that describes his game last night. Overwhelmed. I was going to go with stiff. He is a stiff who you can't play. Uh, and- Walker, I will say this. I talked to Walker. It was not off the record, but it was kind of after the recording. Walker said he's going to be great. And now NBA players are going to say that, but there was no microphone in front of Walker. He didn't have to say that. He recognized, well, I mean, Walker recognized he kicked his butt last night. Like Walker knew he really outplayed him, but he said he's one of the strongest people he's ever defended and he's going to be really good. And I still believe that I, he, but he got his butt kicked last night. That was a pretty terrible debut. Fouling out in 15 minutes is rough. Not enough lateral quickness, not an accident. He fouled out in 15 minutes. They're going to put him in the pick and roll every single they are. time, every second he steps on the floor, and you can't play that. The, the the reason, the magic of Rudy Gobert, truly, we can we can talk about how he became an elite player. He figured out how he can be effective guarding the pick and roll because you can't just be a drop big because they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. These yep. are NBA players. They're yeah. going to kill you. The Jazz were... 16 of 27 when he was on the floor, they shot 60% almost. That's 59%. Yeah. When he was off the floor, the Jazz were 24 of 58, just 41%. Yeah. You get the, the legendary Billy Donovan, the, the, you read his lips, can't play canter. Yeah. Why do you think that is? It's not that, you know, he could be the biggest, strongest guy with the best touch on the planet. Right. But if he's going to give up two points every single time because he's on the floor, he can't play. I don't think he can play. I That was my knock on him yesterday was his secondary action defending the rim 
when you move the ball is too slow. And we talked about that on the show. And you saw the two Lowry Markinen alley oops that was the exact same play. It was just flipped on which side of the ball he dunked it from. And I I know one of them was against the ED. I think the other one was too. And then there was another one where the Jazz just came in from the baseline. And Marcus Smart like said, like, Zach, you gotta move. Like, you're in the wrong spot. You're that big. You have to move to help me when I let my guy go past me to get to you. But yeah. if there's nobody there, it's a layup. So if he isn't able to do that, his size is totally negated. Okay. I've got a mental exercise for you. All right. You went snowboarding with our friend uh, Kyle Gunther not that long ago. Okay. Kyle snowboards a lot. He does, yeah. And you went with him and you haven't gone as much. Right. I'm guessing that you were pretty fatigued at the end. I was. Now, I want you to remember how you felt the next morning. Right. When you got out of bed. Uh Uh-huh. Remember how you felt. Uh Uh-huh. Now, imagine yourself having to get back to prevent a Lowry Martin, Mar- uh, Markin and alley in that state. Okay. It's really hard. It is hard. You're really yeah. stiff. Right. <laughs> you're, you're really, <laughs> You think really that's how stiff. Zach Eady feels all the time. All, it, it's Too not stiff. his fault. It's just how his body moves. He's 7'9 and 400 pounds. Andre the Giant was a stiff too. He's 7'4, 300 pounds. Again, the magic of of Wembenyama is he is not a stiff. He's not. No, he's he's Rudy Gobert athletically, if not a little bit better, and he is seven foot five. Like you can't be a seven foot stiff. Giannis is not. That he, is funny you say that because I asked I asked Walker is, is Edie the biggest guy you've ever played against? I didn't know if high school there was some freak or you know what I mean. Yeah. And he said, "Well, do you count Wemby?" And I said, "Okay, Wemby's a good." He's like, "Wemby's probably taller. Yeah. Zach's way stronger." I'll tell you a, a secret that the the NBA <laughs> astonishingly never woke up to. You know why the Jazz beat the Rockets two years in a row in the playoffs back in the aughts? Because Yao Ming was a stiff. Yeah, Memo Okur was really Memo Yao and Boozer was a really were able to go around him. No, that, they that lost will be the big because of that. That and will be Edie's big challenge. I don't think he can. I mean, you can play a stiff fifteen minutes. I guess he's got to get serviceable at the rim. Otherwise, you're right. He Rudy can't play thirty minutes. Rudy was a foul machine mm-hmm. for the first part of his career. A foul machine, and Rudy figured out how he was going to guard the pick and roll, and that if he spread out long enough, he could n- negate the fact that he wasn't that laterally quick. And maybe Edie figures something like that out, but. Rudy's a lot more limber than he is. Yeah, yes, he is. And his body was able to transform. And Edie's not going to be able to transform his body like that. They are at Houston on Friday, Memphis. I'll be, I'm going to be watching Edie all year. I'm fascinated. I, it was a coin toss for a lot of people. I was on this side. I think he's going to make it. You're on the side. He's not. So I'm curious to watch it. Well, Memphis bet way too much on that. He will. They did. Hey, our friend uh, Kristen Peak, the Yahoo Sports draft expert, said she thought it was the worst draft pick she'd seen, ever seen. So she's and, with you. And Kristen's a genius. She knows. She does know. So, yeah, she's very good at her job. Oh, yeah. We, we have more. I yeah. Thought, this I is only was, top three stories. Wanted, <laughs> now really, this was number one. I really wanted to bag on Edie. Uh, next. All right. Number two. Utah Hockey Club hosts the Colorado Avalanche. Chance to uh, bounce back tonight. 4-0 loss to the Ottawa Senators. Gave up four goals in eight minutes. Played. They didn't play all that poorly. They just had a really bad stretch. We'll see if they can bounce back against a cool team in the Avalanche tonight. Yeah, hopefully the uh, we see a ton of goals, a bunch of goals. And uh, I, I was just thinking, who would win in a fight between an avalanche and a Yeti? Like, I figure if you're a surviving yet- Yeti, well, you probably have survived some avalanches. Yeah. And the other thing is, is the Avs have a secondary or tertiary logo that is a Yeah, they're former mascot. Yeti. Isn't that one what of the reasons why some people think they won't do it or it's too close to have one? That so, one somebody of the, said the that knocks on the could, Yeti. There could have been a, yeah, a trademark issue or some yeah. such, but... Doesn't seem like that's going to be no. a hang-up. Um, this is fun. Avalanche have a ton of super high-caliber players. Some of the best players in the world uh, do play for the Avalanche, and I'm sure there are a lot of Avalanche fans in Salt Lake City because it's been your closest hockey team for the last two decades. So excited to have them come in, and we'll see if the defense can play a little bit better. Now, the defense was bad, was okay except for those those eight minutes, and really some of it was the goalkeeping. So I think defense is likely going to struggle for the, the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. it was... I mean, even to somebody who's trying to pick up on hockey, that was the vulnerability of the team going in. And Our guy, Cole Bagley's over at uh, Morning Skate right now. He literally just tweeted that uh, Vizemelka, the backup uh-huh. goalkeeper, 
last guy off the ice, usually an indication that he's going to get the start tonight in goal. Yeah. All right. Well, he uh, had a clean sheet over the last two uh, periods. It was Ingram who gave it the four goals. We'll see uh, what they can do. Bad news. Uh, John Marino, who's one of the free agent additions on defense, out for three months, I think. Three to four months. With yeah. back surgery. Yep, back surgery. And then Sean Dursey is four to five months with shoulder surgery. Yeah, not great. All right, what's next? All right, number three. This is a fun one. USC can't afford to fire Stinkin' Riley. This might be your favorite top three we've ever done. You can bag on Zach amazing. Eady and Stinkin' Riley. And Stinkin' Riley? Stinkin' it up so bad, but USC can't fire him because they'd have to pay him how much? Uh, upwards of close to $90 million? Yeah, somewhere in the realm of $88 million, as I understand it. it. That's his buyout currently. Man, at least Texas A&M ponied up the dough to, to bag Jimbo. You know what I you mean? Know, like, oil prices were high at the time, so they could... Yeah, they had some cash. <laughs> so the Trojans can't afford... So Stinkin's in the best position possible. He can stink it up as much as he wants. Do whatever he wants at this point. And he would not get fired. Isn't it... Do you find it as hilarious as I do, Ben? to watch people with all the resources in the world, and this is why I'm a sick person, uh, totally make, like USC has every advantage of any university in in the country when it comes to athletics. They do. They've got the infrastructure, Mm -hmm. the money, the tradition, the market, all, all the things, the cool, all the things. They have bungled every coaching decision that they have made and I'm not even going to give them credit for Pete Carroll because he was like their fourth choice. Yeah. They bungled their way into a good decision. It's not like they were particularly visionary. But AD after AD after AD, it's like you have a you have a two-pronged decision to make, and they pick the wrong one every time. Not to belabor a point that I think you've made very astutely, is that USC's advantage is they can have any player they want any player. in South California. Southern California. Norm Chow came on DJ and PK for years, and he said it was not recruiting at USC. It was selecting. Yeah, right. You pick your guys. Yeah. And they chose to go the softest style of football that there is. Period. It yeah, doesn't make right. any sense. I said it, it doesn't th- make any sense to say we can pick whatever we want. We can pick whatever style we want. We just have to have the coach that matches that style. And they went soft. They in went, Lincoln Riley, yeah, it's they, so weird. They went with a gimmick. Yeah, it's a so soft weird. gimmick. I said it the day he was hired, and people called me crazy. And I was like, "Why would you do that? Why you do that in Lubbock, Washington State? You do that in yeah. Washington State? Yeah, you need to find an advantage, so you use that advantage. You don't need to do that at Texas. You don't need to do that at Southern Cal. You at don't Alabama, need to do that at Alabama, at Florida, Washington. Georgia. You don't need to do that. You don't yeah. need to do any yeah, of Michigan that. Michigan doesn't need to do that. No, you get the big, strong, fast guy, and you t- you turn him loose, and you say, "Go, yeah, go separate that person from the football." And that's what everyone is doing in the Big Ten right now to USC. That's just what everybody's doing. Remember, and that was predictable too. They beat LSU, and we thought, okay, maybe Stinkin's got this maybe, team going. Maybe Stinkin's blanked rolling. Utah State forty-eight zero. We thought, okay, good start. They are uh, one and four since their only win over Wisconsin. They've lost to Michigan, Minnesota, and Michigan stinks. Uh, Penn State's good. They lost close, thirty three thirty there, and they did. Uh, they were up big in the first half, but they blew it, and then they couldn't close out. Uh, notorious juggernaut Maryland. But don't you love it? The USC fans are like, "Whoa, this guy stinks." USC closes the season: Rutgers, Washington, Nebraska, UCLA, Notre Dame. They still probably make a bowl game, but yeah, like make a bowl game can no longer is not the standard at, at USC. Six wins is not the standard when you have a. $12 million roster, I'd imagine, and a $90 million head coach. I expressed that I, I played golf with a big USC fan when I was in Palm Springs. Uh-huh. Like, this guy got paired up. And he was a fireman, and he was a super nice dude, very friendly, huge USC fan, you know, the golf cutter covers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so I told him this, that, like, Stinkin is a bad fit, and why would they do that? And this was, what, two years ago, Ben? So it was... Pre Utah beating, still them kind three of a hot times. take. Yeah, it was definitely, and the, yeah. and this guy pushed back big time. You know, he thinks about you and every day of his life. I will never see this human ever again. <laughs> but I take so much satisfaction. You know, he in, goes like, to bed they're... thinking that was the worst round of golf of my life. <laughs> that absolute moron played me like a fiddle. <laughs> I knew exactly <laughs> what was going on. Stay tuned. More Jacob Ed next. Ninety-seven five, the KSL Sports Zone.
Uh, hut, hut! What a team! Hut, hut! What a team! It's game week for the Cougars. Cougars. And the zone is getting you ready for kickoff. After their miraculous victory against Oklahoma State, the Cougars look to keep their dream season alive with a trip to Central Florida. Listen all week long for the best coverage of Cougar football. Then catch the Cougar pregame show this Saturday at 1230 with the postgame show immediately following the game. Your home for the best coverage of Cougar football is live on air. Online and on the KSL Sports app. Yeah, boy. This is 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Oh, hey, guys. Jake and Ben here for our friends at Peach Doors and Windows. Ben, if I had to pick out a theme for the show so far today, it would be that we are right about a lot. A lot. We are right about a lot. And people should listen to us for our correct and accurate takes. Uh, I say that somewhat in jest, but you know one thing we are right about. And uh, you and I have been down there. We've seen the operation. We know the people. And that is Peach Doors and Windows. If you go with Doors and Windows from Peach, you're going to have a good experience and you're going to get what you want. And, uh, yes, yeah, we're right about it. But you know what? So are all the five-star reviews you're going to find on Google when you search for Peach Doors and Windows. You can trust the people who have gone, who have shopped, who have worked with Peach Doors and Windows and found success and been happy with the process. Every step of the way from walking in the showroom, talking to Cindy, talking to the knowledgeable staff, low pressure. No one's jumping down your throat to try and sell you something you don't need. They just want to make sure you have the most perfect home you can have with customized doors and windows. Know a lot of folks out there looking for ways to invest in their homes. Well, windows and doors are a great place to start. You can check them out on Google, as Ben just recommended. You can give them a call, 801-566-1255. Set up a free in-home estimate. You can go to peachbuildingproducts.com and simply drop by their showroom, 2940 South, 300 West in Salt Lake. It's Peach Doors and Windows. Why are you running on the treadmill wearing dress shoes and khakis? I'm training to go the extra mile. What? You know, here at John Watson Chevrolet, we're Utah's best reviewed Chevy dealer because we always go the extra mile for our customers. Yeah, but that means we'll do anything to give customers a great experience. Going the extra mile is just a metaphor. So you're saying I don't have to run on this treadmill? Not for the reasons you think you do. John Watson Chevrolet in Ogden, your five star Chevy dealer. Chevrolet, together, let's drive. So, right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care. And here's why. This time of year is decision time for a lot of people, but it's also when you can join MediShare and save even more than usual. For many families, joining MediShare means saving about 500 bucks a month, which is a game changer for a lot of people, obviously. But what's more, MediShare members like it a lot. Their satisfaction rate is 98%. Imagine that. And MediShare is a proven thing, too, for over 30 years. It's a Christian community of hundreds of thousands of people now. And here's the thing. If you join before October 30th and you mention the promo code SHARE, they'll waive your application fee. So you save even more right off the bat. I'll give you the number here in a second, but just call and you'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline is October 30th. So call now. You'll save even more. Here's the number. 877-26-BIBLE. That's 877-26-BIBLE. 877-26-BIBLE. Hey, Outback. Forrester. What are you in here for? A tire rotation? Yes, and an oil change and a car wash, all for $99.95. Not that I care about the price, that's my human's problem. $99.95? Someone should tell my human about that. Steve hasn't washed me in weeks. Don't worry, Doug will let him know. Drop into Doug Smith Subaru in American Fork for an oil change, tire rotation, and a car wash, all for just $99.95. No one knows service like Doug. Join Bar W Beef on Saturday, the 26th, from 1030 to 6 for the grand opening of the state-of-the-art USDA beef processing facility and retail butcher shop in Nephi. At Bar W Beef, they control the entire production process, from birth to processing, ensuring the freshest, highest quality meat delivered direct to you. Visit the retail store this Saturday for product samples and special promotions. For more details, visit online at barwbeef.com. That's barwbeef.com. Are you looking to improve your home security and privacy? Or maybe you're just looking to upgrade the look of your yard? Well, Vinyl Industries is Utah's oldest and largest vinyl fencing company. Whether you're looking for semi-private, fully private, ornamental, chain link, or ranch rail fencing, Vinyl Industries is ready to give you a quote. Order your Vinyl Industries fence today, and Vinyl Industries is going to give you a $400 four-foot gate for free. Just Google Vinyl Industries in Lehigh. Restrictions apply. 
Every day is a chance to be kinder to your body and mind. Let us help you be a better you. U of U Health, partner for the Jazz, Utah Hockey Club, Utes, and Grizzlies. Visit uofuhealth.org. This is your Utes at 50 update on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Jake and Ben, here's your Utah 50 update. Money Parks, receiver, talking about uh, team morale. Just positive, uh, positive. No one's going to get us out this funk besides us. So we just be all, all in, 111. I'm just taking it day by day, senior year. Not my greatest year. So, hey, we just love me, though. Need a new roof? Utah Roofing Pros offers new installs starting at $49.95. Utah Roofing Pros, premier roofing experts serving Ogden to Provo for free inspection and pre qualification. Visit utahroofingpros.com. The sports you love, the teams you can't live without. Get a sense of urgency! This is Jake Scott and Ben Anderson on 97.5 The KSL Sports Zone. Jakey Man, this segment is brought to you by Peach Doors and Windows. Amazing home transformations begin with Peach, where five-star reviews are the norm. Call them today for your free in-home estimate, 801-566-1255. Peach Doors and Windows. Man, we've bagged on Edie. We've bagged on Stinkin' Riley. Who it's else can day. we bag on? Yeah, who, who well, else are you notorious? Let's, well, armpit's not up on the yeah, right. on the monitor. TV's off. Lloyd's are, like right over there. Oh, Lloyd's here. Yeah, we could bag on. Yeah, maybe. Too bad Caleb Williams doesn't play tonight. If you oh, to I'd love to bag on fingernails. I think he might. I think he might be good. Bad news. So, do you think that Stinkin is honestly a hustler who knew that he stinks and was just <clears throat> riding the wave? So we mentioned this off the air a little bit. My my initial thought was, man, he was riding high at Oklahoma. Why would you ever leave? And then in the same thought, I thought, oh, yeah, our whole conversation was about how he has a $90 million buyout. That's why you leave. Yeah, you get – your lottery ticket comes up once. Once. Yeah. If you're really good, it's actually real. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. If you're elite, elite, you will keep getting paid and keep having those huge paydays. If you don't know if you're elite and somebody offers that type of money, you just take it. And whatever they gave him, $120 million, $100 million, whatever – it was the right move. He took it. And he could lose and he can get fired and whatever. Everyone will say he's a bum and they'll say, you're right. I'm the I'm the worst football coach in this $30 million house in Malibu on the beach drinking Mai Tais for the rest of my uh, life. You're right. I'm an absolute idiot. I, You've got it figured out. Well, I'd get out of Malibu, first of all. Okay. You're I, out on Malibu? Uh, well, I distance myself from the whole, from, okay. from the, the sure. whole thing. Sure. Go to Hilton Head. Because you know where you don't have to hear about USC football? Guam. Yeah, anywhere else. Any, yeah. Guy, yeah. <laughs> anywhere else. Pick an island. Hey, Florida. As long as he's there, you don't really have to hear about it either, which is nice. Oh, hey. It's, it, it is curious to me, though, that USC can't afford to pay him to go away. I mean, I thought USC could afford anything. The problem is, A, who you get to hire to replace him. Mean, there's always the guy. Anyone but else. it is the issue that you talk about this a lot. Why is the last guy doing well always the guy who gets hired? It's so stupid. It is stupid. It is such a dumb thing that we always do, and, and nobody's figured it out. I mean, it's DeBoer. It's uh, replaced oh, DeBoer at Washington. Well, I mean, it was Gary Anderson. It was yeah. uh, Jed Fish. Yeah, Jed yeah, Fish. Jed right, Fish. Right, yeah, it's, it's just always the last guy. It does, oh, this guy had a really good season. And it's because if you get an urban, you hit a home run. And, you know, Florida got an urban and hit a home run, and it was worth it, but... There are way more whiffs than home runs in that cycle. Well, Urban's track ref record was way more proven it was. to be a winning track record. And I know that sounds crazy, but like, um, who was it? Jim McIntyre? McIntyre. Mike McIntyre. Mike McIntyre. Colorado. Yeah. 
He sucked it. Where was he? San Jose State. He sucked there for like six years and then had one like burner. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was Florida. Hello, Colorado. Yeah, right. And then did did Florida get him? No, after? that's Jim McElwain, that's who McElwain. basically yeah. did the same thing in Colorado State. That's right. That's right. Oh, I mean, Michigan State hired Mel Tucker. Did the same thing at Colorado. See, like DeBoer, he was a coordinator like two and a half years ago. Yeah. He was a, considered somewhat of an average coordinator when he was at Indiana. And then where did he get Fresno and had a hot 10 seconds at Fresno and then Washington and had Penix. Penix, who he identified at Indiana. Yeah. Like, that's one thing with these coaches. They just grab players and cash in ride on it until it stops. Yep. Yep. That's what, that's, seriously, that's what Stinkin did with, with Caleb Williams. He's like, I've got a lotto ticket right here. Yeah. I'm going to take this big job because I'm taking this. I can tell them I'm bringing my Heisman guy with me. So give me that $90 million buyout because you're going to win a national championship tomorrow. And then that doesn't prove out. The lottery ticket goes to the NFL and he's left holding the back. <laughs> but he wins. Yeah, right. He Not on the field. Not on the field. He no, wins no, in life. In life, he yeah, wins. He wins. He won. It's great. It is a scam. Yeah, good for him. Living the dream, <laughs> scamming people for hundreds of millions of dollars. I said this legally, and this is this is too mean. But like, Utah hired Craig Smith after his guy left. You hire him before yeah. his yeah. guy. You get his you, guy. At you least get, get his, his guy. guy. Yeah. Don't hire like Alabama hired DeBoer after his guy left. Yeah. Right. No, hire him when Penix has a year to play. Right. right. It was the issue with Washington not getting Fafita yeah. and T Mac. It's like, well, those are the guys. Those are his guys. Right. He didn't get them. Maybe Fafita's not. Or at the least guy. know T-Mac enough is. to know, like, okay, this guy lost his guy. Maybe I should look a little deeper. Like DeBoer got a lot of mileage out of Penix. Maybe we should look into like what what how how are you without Penix? Urban just put together whatever roster he was handed at Bowling Green and then Utah. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Urban brought one, I mean it was a different world then. I was going to say I don't think Urban brought one player from Bowling Green. I don't think he he Did took he take one, anyone from Utah. One player uh, a corner, what was his name? Ryan Smith, I think. Okay. I'd have to go back to and Florida. look. Florida. Uh look at it. Yeah. From Utah. He was a stud freshman corner who played right away at Utah okay. and then went with Urban to Florida. We had this conversation yesterday of who, when we misidentify Johnny Football when really it's Mike Evans. We do it with coaches more than anything. Yeah. We misidentify coaches when it's their starting quarterback or their power forward or whatever. We think that coach is great. It's like, no, his player was great. Yeah. And he, he cashed that ticket. Well, because the players are great. The and players I'm are not, and I'm not saying that coaches are, are meaningless because I don't believe that to be the truth either. But like Phil Jackson coached a lot of great players. Yeah. There's fewer good coaches than there are good players. Well, I would say, because Phil was a good coach, but not in the traditional sense that we think good coaches. Phil was a good coach because he he let Dennis Rodman go to Vegas. Phil was a good coach because he was a, a he could shuffle the team together and yeah, get did. it to be functional. Yeah. No matter who the personality, he could find were, a wavelength for the team. He could find a way to make everybody pull in the right direction. Yeah. With and you look at some of those Bulls teams, he was really good at it. He was coaching Shaq and Kobe. Stopped coaching Shaq and Kobe. Wrote a book about how horrible Shaq and Kobe are. Like that was the point of the mm-hmm. book. And then somehow was able to go back and coach Shaq and Kobe, or at least Kobe, right? Yeah. Trash Kobe in yep. a book yep. was on this station promoting that book, by the way. And then, yeah, I, I'll figure out a way to get the best out of Kobe. Like, the man's, a, the man's a genius, but not in the way that you think. Yeah. People say, you know, he's a triangle offense. First of all, he didn't invent the triangle offense. Right. Second of all, do you know what the triangle offense is? Let Michael Jordan make a decision. That's, yeah. what, that's what the triangle offense is. It doesn't, like, Jeff Van Gundy has a famous quote about it. Yeah. Right, and it's not worked anywhere else. Ever. Yeah. But you have 23 and then, you know, Kobe. Yeah. And strange the triangle offense involves Shaq when uh, they have Shaq, but didn't involve the center when they had stiffs like Luke Longley. Bill Cartwright. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a thing. Phil Jackson isn't isn't a great X's and O's coach, but, man, he can ride some best players. Yeah, he can. He can take credit for other people's work like the best of them. But then there's somebody, and I'm not trying to – 
compare Bronco Mendenhall to the great coaches. So don't don't misunderstand me. But Bronco, as flawed as he is, is a really good football coach. Yeah, he is. He will get more out of his teams than he should get. Right. He's really good at the X's and O's thing. He's really good at discipline. He's really good at the key things it takes to make average teams good or bad teams average. Yeah. Yeah. He's a really, He's a really good raiser. coach. That He's a floor way. raiser. Right. Yeah. But he doesn't even want to be bothered with good players. Right. He doesn't want to deal with he the doesn't nonsense even, that comes with it. He doesn't even want to be distracted. He never even talked about the NFL at BYU. Ever. That was not... He, he would pass on players recruiting. Who was the big recruit from Utah County that ended up going to USC, the the linebacker that everybody loved? Gustin. Oh, Gustin. Poor Porter Gustin. Gustin. Yeah. Didn't even bother with it. No. Yeah. Not yeah. not our guy. Yep. So it's. I think there's two ends of the spectrum. I do think there are good coaches out there that make a, dif- a difference. But the best, the quote-unquote best coaches are the ones that coach the best players, and that's not coincidental. Yep, you're right. I mean, you love bagging on Pop now. What's the difference between Pop today and Pop of 2008? And don't give me this game past me by crap that's not true. Oh, yeah, Tim. I love helping people, just make a difference and make an impact, you know, working with children.